This is Terrence Orange and Banks with Information Age Financial Solutions coming to you with an article from Zero Hedge about upscale malls. And I talked about, you know, the real, the real estate and retail apocalypse in numerous other videos before, as well as the restaurant apocalypse. But what's been immune so far has been, you know, these up end malls where you know, usually a higher end consumer would go to. But apparently that's cracking down too. Uh, as always, I'm going to put a link inside the description. We'll dive right into the article. Cracks are showing on the surface of once safe top tier malls. For a while, it looked like as though top tier malls may be able to narrowly avoid the ugly fate that was facing most malls across the country in the wake of the Amazon revolution. But this holiday season looks like that's not going to be the case. Some landlords in the most highly trafficked, trafficked malls across the country are issuing warnings about slowing income growth as they try to continue target new ways to get beaten to the door, according to Wall Street Journal. Simon Proper Group said during its most recent earnings call that retail bankruptcies negatively impacted net operating income in the quarter. It also lowered its 2019 guidance as a range of $6.76 to $6.81 from $7.04 to $7.14 due to a one-time cost associated with the early debt repayment. Taubman Center is one of the, one of the more or less short hills in New Jersey and Beverly Center in Los Angeles also lowered its 2019 guidance for same property net operating income growth to a range from 0% to 1% from 2%. The company's COOO blamed the, the lowering partially on the bankruptcy of Forever 21. Interesting. Zero Hedge has a, a number of advertisers, so it takes a little bit longer. So I scroll through those. Give me a second. These higher end malls were among top 20, 260 tier malls that may have analysts thought were protected from store closing and bankruptcies. But bankruptcies of large name retailers are starting to create aftershocks even in these once protected malls. And even when malls are fall, revenue can still be facing as landlords have to cut rent to entice stores to stay. Forever 21 has started closing 87 of its stores, which is actually an improvement after planning on closing 178 before securing rent reductions from landlords. Landlords, of course, had to lower their earnings projection as a result. Average, average occupancy of top malls is still in the 90% range. But for now, some analysts are concerned about the higher costs landlords face to replace deplete, departing tenants. They are also expressing concern about the sales per square foot metric that is often touted by landlords in the business. Malls usually, once, usually only need one very productive tenant, like a Tesla store, to skew its metric higher. Vince Tibone, as an analyst at Green Street Advisor, said, all it tells me is that you added a Tesla into your mall. It tells me nothing about how the mall is doing. <laughs> well said. And while the market has roared in 2019, investors have punished top mall owners. Shares of Taubin and Makarich are down about 33% each, and Simon's about down about 14%. Dividend yields currently hover around 10% for some names. Bill Smee, Chief Executive Smee Capital Management, started investing Macarich because Macarich executives have been buying their own shares. Still, some analysts are cautious. A recent Morgan Stanley noted ordered they may not as be as attractive as they look, especially since the dividends for some REITs are not fully covered and require cash flow growth. Landlords point out that they continue to invest in new entertainment options and retail strategies that combine online shopping with the traditional brick and mortar retail. They're also spending to give other Older malls facelifts. Ali son has spoken when our company continues to be well positioned, prosperous, and dynamic. You know, you have it here, even the top 10 malls, especially with stores like Top Tier 21, I mean, Forever 21 closing is causing a huge problem. Things are not looking good starting out for the new year for 2020, especially after the holiday season. I believe consumers tapped out and we're long, long overdue for a recession. Prepare for 2020, it's going to be a rocky one. If this video has been any value to you, please subscribe, leave some comments. Until my next video, I'm out.